Yo guys, what is up? This is Blender Choxy, and I'm continuing my texturing tutorial because I did say that I was going to do it as soon as I could, but I got caught up with a few things. I've been doing a few videos on different channels and things like that. Um, first thing I want to start off with is saying on my channel now, I've sorted everything out into playlists for you guys to easily look at rather than having to go through all my videos and doing it that way. And before long, I'm going to link up each of my videos with annotations so you guys don't have to... Uh, it just saves a few clicks for you guys. You can learn, so so to say it, faster. So, when we left off, and I can't believe I didn't finish the tutorial on this, uh, we basically coloured in, if you will, one of the parts of the guns, and we'll go to adding detail to that later, once we've added detail to the rest, okay? But the first thing you're going to really want to do here, and I can't believe I actually forgot this, you want to go to File, external data and pack into dot blend file right that is the main thing and then file and save your work okay you need to do this this is vital it is absolutely crucially vital i don't even think that made any sense but you need to do it because basically if i was to go and move where is it here it is if i was to go and move say this now out of that folder when i open blender the the body of the gun which is that texture will be pink because it can't find the texture where it was originally go away notifications so that's pretty much why you should pack into the dot blend file but we're gonna get started on coloring the rest of the gun so I'm just gonna open these with GIMP 2.0 there we go I have uh, Shandy never used to like Shandy but is growing on me for some reason Better than T. No, actually, it's not better than T. That was a lie. My screen's gone black. Gone black, I tell you. Come on. Yeah, that's my only. But the things with stuff like GIMP and Photoshop and stuff like that, they just take ages to open. There we go. There we go. Right, so I used Metal 2 the last time. So, like we did last time, we're just going to drag and drop that in. And uh, I'm going to open this window up a bit more. This should be the default windows. I've forgotten how you can actually get the uh I think it you just you just click these two here in the windows to get them to come up if you don't have it. I can't believe I also didn't address that problem uh in the video. But if any of you guys have problems just video response it and uh I'll get to it as soon as I can because I've got a playlist now where I answer your questions. So, we have this here. It's in the top layer. So we're going to move this down to here, just like we did last time. We're going to scale it down because... If I just click that there. We're going to scale it down because the smaller the texture is, the higher the resolution will be. And it won't look as... It just won't look as blurry. It'll look nice and clear. That's the main thing that we want, is to have it looking as clear and as sexy as possible. And the reason for clicking this is obviously so that it doesn't stretch the texture in any way it scales it all proportionately so if we just say uh yeah about there we don't need it to be too small because it's it's already near a blank texture so we're just going to right click on that and click duplicate layer and we're going to move that along in fact i want to actually get this to stretch out so i'm just going to try and get these to join up like so and then we're going to right click the top one, make sure it's the top one, and we're going to go to merge down, like that, okay? So as you can see then, we have like a larger, if you will, thing. So I'm just going to, I'm obviously going to rush this. You guys are going to really take your time on this, I hope. And you're going to video response your finished work and things like that. And then after this, we're going to do animation and importing it into Unity and getting a, a little mini game set up, I suppose. So then we're going to duplicate that again. It's just rinse and repeat here. You just keep doing this. So yeah, now that covers the entire thing, we're going to merge down. This is pretty much exactly what I did at the end of part one, but I might be doing this a little bit slower for you guys, so it's not as gobbledygook and stupid. So we're going to go here to mode, we're going to go down to overlay, like we did last time. Now I have to try and get this the same shade. If we look at the picture that I have, let's have a look at shading. Right, so that one's a little bit brighter than the rest of the gun, so we've got to try and make that as bright as we can, okay? If that makes sense for you guys. So, we're going to duplicate this. So, it's got it's got to be pretty dark anyway. So, if I go to then colors and levels, 
this one here if the more you do that is contrast so it'll bring like cracks and creases out more and make them more defined but then this one actually adjusts the brightness whoa that looks weird that looks really weird actually I don't know why it does that but as you can see yeah it does that so I don't really want that to be any color other than gray we don't need it green splodginess that was just a, it was probably because I went so high on the contrast but that is not a problem make that darker okay so then we're gonna save as make sure it's always a PNG image um, they're not as high resolution as JPEGs but then they have the transparency which you gonna which you are gonna need so we're gonna go body underscore texture and we're gonna save that as make sure it's saved as a PNG I never check to make sure it's saved as PNG which it is so we're gonna click save export and save here we go so now when we go back into blender once this is saved it does take time we're gonna click on the body of the gun which is what we were just editing the reason why I go into edit mode is so it brings it up in here so I don't have to go blah 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 it's just one press of a button so that's just a little thing to speed up time so image replace the image with the body underscore texture so there now that is actually good in terms of the shading that I want that is a lot darker than this but is it too dark um obviously because I'm rushing I'm gonna go ahead and say that looks fine but say now with the gun this appears this here or this appears to be brighter than the rest of it if I wanted to just make this maybe a tad bit brighter say if I wanted to do that how long have we been going for been going for six minutes what I'm gonna do is obviously because we've modeled everything modular this is where it becomes helpful and you start to realize oh wait now what this is why we did this other than the animation purposes and whatnot so I want to make this brighter instead of going uh, and selecting every piece just hover your mouse over it and press L and it does that so you've I've already covered that in part one as well I will be going over some things just to kind of say get it get it into your brain you know repetition rinse and repeat so now in the editor as you can see these things are now highlighted so they're there there and there so we are going to now go back into GIMP and this is where texturing really becomes a pain in the ass we're gonna go back into GIMP and I need to minimize that do that okay so looking at the UVs there's the two parts and then the next bit should be there followed by there and there so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select our top layer that should be dark gonna get the brush tool here and we're gonna select a white uh, like a light gray so if you look next to your P key P for pencil <laughs> and uh, we've got like two brackets now both of these control the size of your brush so we're just gonna the one on the right the right bracket which is the close one actually makes your brush larger so we're just gonna do that the thing is with GIMP you can only go to a certain size which is bad but once we've done that that is too bright we want that to be a little bit darker so you're just fiddling around with the colors that is okay so we're just gonna draw along here make sure it's the brush tool and not anything else I think it's the spray tool it kind of like it doesn't see if I do that there is the line but with the thing oh, I need to make the brush bigger with the spray tool it doesn't really do much unless you constantly give it a go you know so we're just gonna go straight to the brush tool because it's a lot faster and I may I may mix things up with of course Photoshop because I am doing a college course where I learn Photoshop so um, that can be a pain in the ass. If you guys want Photoshop tutorials, let me know. I can try and get them out as much as I can. And then there's the other bit. And then down here, if I make this brush smaller. So, like I said, we're just getting the basic outline for everything. Getting it all the colors that we want. In which then we go to adding details. Like, for example, the grip for the guy to pull the gun back, which goes around here, I think yes no oh, wow there that's a weird place to put this uh, grip but there you know adding details like that I might try and do that but that requires Photoshop for me because I'm not as good in GIMP as I'm in Photoshop but that's pretty much what we, where we're going to be going in the next couple of tutorials I do still have some time so same as last time image 
reload the image this time because we don't actually need to replace it because the image is already there so as you can see now this is now brighter yeah yeah what am I on but that is your first step to really going in and actually editing the picture so you can get two things different colors but they're the same texture okay and that can be quite tricky especially with like areas like this where everything is really intricate and UVs are like stuck together for things like marking seams and stuff like that it can be a real pain in the ass but I think we are now going to move on to the grip which in my opinion is quite easy but it can be difficult okay it depends on everything so as you can see the grip is kinda like ziggy zaggedy so what we are gonna do for that is if I just edit with GIMP rubber at 87 Oh, grip. Edit with GIMP. Okay. What we're going to do here, and I hope I have enough time to actually, yeah, I should have roughly enough time. I'm going to basically do this, and then I'll go back and add the detail later on. But we're just going to drag the grip texture that I put in. I got the Dropbox link on part one of the video if you want to go there and look at that. Now, this is where the scaling becomes important because the bigger this texture is, the uh the bigger it's going to look on the model so i'm going to scale that down just a tad there and this becomes a real pain in the ass to get these to actually line up so you're just gonna have to keep doing this it is very long i'm like i said i am gonna rush with this so i can get it done for you guys but it all depends on how accurate you are merge down uh, one second guys Hello guys, I apologize for that. I am back now and to save the time, I thought I'd just quickly set everything up. I'd duplicate it all and get it covering the entire picture for you. So that way I could do a little bit more in the tutorial. Uh, if you didn't like that, then I'm sorry. But it's it's pretty much exactly what I did before, just duplicating and merging down. So we're going to quickly overlay that just like last time. And as you can see, this pops up here. So we're going to duplicate the layer again. And maybe duplicate it again. That is good. Make it maybe a little bit darker because it is a very dark color in the picture that we're trying to go for. So if I just do that, maybe there. Right, that looks pretty okay for me. So we're just going to quickly file, save as the grip underscore texture. This is all pretty much rinse and repeat. When it comes to adding the details, I'll show you a couple of new things that you can do. Or things like that, like changing the color, getting it how you want it. But for now, if I just come back into here, image, replace the image, and grip texture, there it is. As you can see, the grip is now like that. Now that might be a little bit bigger than what I actually originally wanted. So if I was to look at my picture, yes, it's a lot bigger than um, what I actually wanted. So I'm just going to go and edit that. R then again, it is a rush tutorial for me but you guys will obviously if you see something you don't like you make sure you do something about it you know so now what we're gonna do is quite tricky but like I said I'm gonna rush this this is just me being picky with my work so if I was to just make that brighter make it a bright gray and make that larger kind of have that go down like that. Oh, I want to really do this as a, a, a new layer. So if I just create new layer, okay, you do that. Make that maybe a darker gray about there. Put that over there like so. Go around thing. This is really rushed, by the way, and I do apologize for how rushed this is. But, you know. I'm doing this for you guys so there that's as close as I really want to get it for tutorial purposes uh, have that go you know I'm doing this all with the mouse by the way this is very tricky now the reason why I'm able to go over that is it's black the ambient occlusion is basically telling me that it's it's black because there's nothing hitting it there's no light hitting it so it does it you can't really see it okay that is one thing you have to remember so if I was to go over 
that bit there, then it might be visible, but we'll find that out now. So if I was just to save that awfully done bit and have a look at that this will be awful by the way just watch how awful this is reload the image yeah as you can see it's terrible but that is just another thing that you can do just slowly going around i've clearly rushed that just to show you but i'm not going to have that in there because i don't want it so file save export that is actually hideous. <laughs> uh, edit it out of the tutorial. No, I'm joking. Cancel image, reload the image. Okay, so that's pretty much the base colors, other than the clip, which is, again, just rinse and repeat of the same old stuff. Okay, it's pretty simple. The next couple of steps is just coloring in the few things that we want to be colored in, adding the little details, and then maybe the specular maps after it. Hope you guys enjoyed this second part. Um, the gun is starting to look more finished and remember this isn't a temporary thing this is just you know you can just do this until you learn how to actually do better texturing or get someone else on it um, I hope you guys enjoyed this thank you and goodbye